So we go from over here, and this is known as shutoff head on this side, and this is known as run out. Okay. Once you get out in this last 10, 15 percent of the pump curve, you really don't want to run there. Okay. You start to get into the unstable region of the curve, and yes, we show it out that far. But mm -hmm. You really don't want to be running out. Just because the pump's just spinning so fast because of lack of pressure. It's yeah, the pump is trying to move a whole bunch of water, and the velocities are real high. Mm -hmm. And um, it's no different than a fan curve. You know, when you get to the end of the curve, strange things start to happen. Right, right. And gotcha. so keep in mind, fan curves and pump curves, we're moving a fluid, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just with pump curves, if the fluid gets out of the pipe, you get wet. In a fan system, if the fluid gets out of the ductwork, you just get blown on. Right, right. Okay. So the next curve we look at is our system curve. Okay, so that is just a mathematical calculation from zero flow, zero head. Okay, and normally it starts down here at the bottom, but zero flow, zero head all the way out to the end. Okay, it's just a mathematical calculation. Every one of us that builds pumps, we will plot the system curve for you because you tell us what your design flow and design head is, and we can right. do the math from there. Okay, and those are determined by the test stand setup you went over earlier. The so well, pipe the, diameters. Yeah, the design and ideal under ideal conditions. Right? right. The design flow and design head comes from the design engineer, and then all the curve data comes from us putting right. a pump on a test stand and knowing what that blue pump curve is actually going to look like. So when you see a pump curve when it comes out to you as an engineer, what you're getting is the intersection of the two, where the system curve and the pump curve intersect. That is your operating point. That's the duty point that you've selected or you've said, hey, Mr. Armstrong, I want a pump that'll do 5,000 GPM at 100 feet ahead. And that's where that dot's going to be. Okay. So that's what gotcha. that is. So next thing we got to look at, and this is where pump curves start to get a lot more complex. Okay. Because we put a whole lot more lines on the pump curve. Yeah. Okay. The first thing that we're going to look at is we may have multiple impeller sizes shown on a curve because we build pumps with a lot of different impeller sizes. It may be the exact same pump, same casing, same motor, same motor speed, I should say, because um, the horsepower is going to change a little bit as we move up and down on impeller size and flow and head. Um, so we may show this is what's called a family curve. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in a family curve, what it means is we're going to show all the available impeller trims that we build for that particular casing size. Okay. So that's why it's a family curve, but nothing's changed any. There's total head. Okay. We have it in both feet and meters because we got to serve both markets. Okay. So there's our headline. There's our impeller diameters. We have another line on here called NPSHR, which is net positive suction head required. And sometimes NPSHR numbers show up here at the top. Sometimes they're down here at the bottom. Most of our curves are down here at the bottom and there's a chart that'll tell you what that scaling is. Then the next thing you see is these isobaric lines on the curve. Those are the efficiency lines, okay? So as you move back and forth across the curve with different impeller sizes, you notice your efficiency is moving around, okay? And that's how efficient we're using the motor power and how much of that we're using effectively and efficiently okay and then this last line here this green line that is our motor horsepower line so you see we start down here at 200 horsepower is the smallest one way down here and it goes up to 50 300 350 on up to a 500 horsepower pump 